Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, the Holy Bible tells us precisely what the state of the world will be like during the last days. One of the top scriptures that I believe reveals we are living in the final moments before the rapture of the church and the start of the seven-year tribulation period is recorded in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, but also in Romans chapter 1, verses 28 to 32. Now, I want you to pay very close attention to what the Apostle Paul records here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. And I want you to notice the similarities to not only what Paul reveals here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, but also in Romans chapter 1, verse 28 to 32. Let's start with 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Now let's go to the book of Romans chapter 1 verses 28 to 32 and listen to what the Apostle Paul records here and notice this striking similarity in this list that he goes down. Uh, folks, it's basically the same thing, but let's go. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. I think it's pretty safe to say that everything that's recorded in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, and Romans chapter 1, verse 28 to 32, is exactly what's occurring right now before our very eyes more than any other time in history. With the rapid increase in technology and the explosion of social media, our generation has turned into the all about me generation. Let's take a look at just a few of the things listed in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, and you tell me if these are not characteristics of the era we live in today. First, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, uh, we see where the Apostle Paul records people will be lovers of self. First, I think it's safe to say that men and women are lovers of their own selves. Just go on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and you will see how obsessed people are with themselves. Social media has turned into the selfie war. It's all about me, me, me. In fact, just over the last couple of years, there has been many deaths by selfies. I have seen several breaking stories of men and women who were so driven to get their selfie that they did not, they did not realize they were about to fall off a cliff or off a large bar, uh, building. The bottom line, this generation is without a doubt obsessed with their own beauty, money, and success more than any generation in human history. Next, in... 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, the Apostle Paul records people will be disobedient to parents. Secondly, I think it's safe to say kids and adults are disobedient, disobedient to their parents. Like many of us, when I was growing up, if I backtalked my parents or someone older than me, I would be punished. Today, 
most kids are raised spoiled. With full access and a heavy influence of social media and the entertainment industry, music, movies, TV, etc., they are running around with no discipline whatsoever. Many are as going far as using foul language when speaking to adult peers and even their parents. Every place you see children these days, you see disobedience. I recently witnessed one of my own nieces who is currently 15 years old using every foul word I can think of toward her mother. My mouth almost dropped, but then I realized 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 prophesied that would it would be like this in the last days. I mean, folks, it's not just my niece. I mean, whether it's kids that are before teenagers, even teenagers, even adults, when they talk to their parents now, it's just the foul language and the disrespect coming out of uh, kids' mouths. Disobedient to parents? Absolutely. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 2 also says that people will be unthankful and unholy. Next, I think it's safe to say that people are unthankful and unholy. We have a God who has given each of us breath in our lungs. The gift of life is something we should be thankful to God for. But that is not what we see in this world today. We, as Christians, are told to store up treasures in heaven and not on earth. But in this generation, people could care less about treasures in heaven. People today, for the most part, care about the here and the now and their earthly possessions, but could care less about where they are going to spend eternity. Next, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 3, uh, the Apostle Paul records peop this, people will be despisers of those that are good. I think it's safe to say that people are despisers of those that are good. More than any generation in human history, people are calling evil good and good evil. We told, we're told it would be like that in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Topics such as same-sex marriage and abortion, and even this whole transgender movement uh, that's going on, these things are celebrated as is anything that is an abomination to God. Yet, when you try to speak out against it and stand up for the gospel, you are the one that is called immoral. You are the one that is called evil. Humanity has turned into a let's just be happy and live the way we want mentality. But when you bring up the God of the Bible, his commandments, and how we are to abhor that which is evil and cling to that which is good, you are the one pronounced evil. Absolutely, people are despisers of those that are good. Folks, I just reviewed only four of the things listed in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. And there's a striking similarity between what's recorded in 2 uh, Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, and Romans chapter 1, verses 28 to 32. In both of those sections of scripture, just read the list, you'll see the striking similarities, but you will also see every single one of those things recorded fits this generation to a T. And I got news for you, it's not going to get any better, but Jesus will fix all of this one day very soon. We are headed full speed toward the seven-year tribulation period. However, just prior to this, Jesus is going to snatch away Harpazzo, rapture, those that are saved, those that are truly his, before this train hits. All I can tell you is if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around this world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive and Jesus is coming back and he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you you get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you can never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross. So you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. 
Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell is a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he is coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.